basically started doing ground up restorations and then slowly as time moved on there was less and less wrecks and <laughs> original boats to do. So basically over time we started kind of reproducing them. So that's what this is. This is Kenawa. This is a 2002. We started with a, a Rainbow 3 design, <clears throat> which was uh, designed by John Hacker, built by, uh, <clears throat> built by Ditchburn and uh, raced in the 20s. So this is like a scaled down version of that. <clears throat> the original was 26 feet length of hull. This is uh, 22. So plus the outboard rudder and the cut water, you're about 23, 24 overall. So uh, the original customer owned it for about 18 years. It's recently sold and it's on its way to the Adirondacks. So basically what all we've done here is some routine varnish. Redid the bottom paint, etc. You know, shine all the chrome to the, uh, the leather. And basically it's ready to go to the Adirondacks once the uh, border opens. Powered with a, a 350 uh, Mercruiser. Sent out balance, blueprint, powder coated, etc. And uh, wow. So this is a uh, Dolly Durkin. It's a, uh, a replica of uh, Lady Eden's fa famous uh, 36 foot runabout. So it's like a scaled down version that we built, uh, finished in 2009. So it's a hacker APBA hull that we kind of stretched to 29 overall. And you can see the roof basically took a year alone, just the cove and bead, finishing inside and out, all the varnish, etc. And uh, yeah, basically it's the ultimate runaround boat. We used it as a sales tool for a number of years at our cottage. And after my dad finished kind of our next uh, sales tool, we had to sell. So this summer I went to a Muskoka home. Now we're just doing some routine varnish and freshen up basically, modify the seat height and stuff for the new customer. And uh, yeah, it's ready to go this summer. Thankfully, there's no border issue to deal with on this boat, so... Don't touch it. Yeah, so this boat, um, about 20 years ago, a gentleman approached my dad and bought some plans off us and, you know, paid us for some consulting and advice. So, yeah, 20 years later, he's almost at the finish line. I'm just, he's, I've been last summer on it, kind of getting him, helping him get to that line. So now we're kind of at the finishing stages. He's working on some hardware. It's, a, uh, this, it's based off a 17-foot uh, hacker hull. And, uh... Or no, sorry, 19. And uh, yeah, it'll be, it's got nice windshield hardware all custom made for it. He's a real detail guy. His name's Bob Nash for the record. And yeah, so that, that'll keep us busy for another month or so getting it all ready for the water.
Yeah, so this is uh, Green Boats build number two. I was saying before, as time progressed and less originals were around, it kind of just naturally progressed to this. So anyway, this is a 26 and a half foot gentleman's racer. We kind of use proven hull designs, just modify them here and there. <clears throat> this one we've modified into, <clears throat> the transom comes actually into a ducktail. So basically from there, everything gets customized. So that's a wooden pattern that I've made for the uh, rudder standoffs. I'm sand cast, like you can see there on the floor. And then in the end, you know, there won't be another like this in the world. So it's kind of fun. You get to make each boat as different and unique and you know high end as humanly possible. See up there, I got my drive line kind of rough fit, and uh, we're just sealing the bottom at this point. <clears throat> so generally, it takes about a year to get a hull kind of done on the inside and out, sitting on a cradle, ready to you know be decked and customized. So yeah, it's kind of at the exciting stage right now. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, so same thing as I was just mentioning, this is a uh, wooden pattern we make. Each boat's slightly different, so you gotta make custom cutwater pattern for each boat. Then we actually add about an inch after, because they'll actually shrink a tiny bit. So to make this seam tight in the end, <clears throat> You can see now, I still have to take a bunch off so I get it perfectly, you know, it'll take me four or five hours to get this thing fit and perfect, the metal part. Anyway, in the end, you end up with, you know, stunning and durable cut water. So, you know, some of the other ones are just plate steel. This thing gives you the ultimate protection. This is the same as what we usually do, a proven hull design out of the 20s. So we're not gambling on how they're gonna run. My dad has spent his whole life tinkering with these original hull designs, seeing how they run perfectly, the balance points, you know, weight distribution, all that. So yeah, this is extended to 31. So I mean, six people without, you know, even trying, you get eight if you wanted. And it's got dual gas tanks, so if you go on a big trip, you know, St. John's River, wherever, it gives you that peace of mind that you're never going to run out of gas. And one of the cool designs we did on this uh, boat, instead of the grout lines and uh, screws with bungs uh, hiding them, this is kind of the original way they did it for race boats that were lighter. The decks were actually too thin to get a plug in, so they just had the copper screw heads exposed, always slotted, aiming ahead. Where these decks aren't that thin, but we do that for the looks, and it's kind of a nice look. Just it gives gives you another option of a way to do it. He already had two boats with grout lines, so that's what's nice about a custom boat. You can. You know, each stage asks the customer his individual preferences. The uh, transom is what really sets this boat apart. <clears throat> we call it kind of a bobtail, where it bends in in two, two directions, basically, at once. It's really something in the water, with the exhaust at the side. You can see all the, <clears throat> every piece of hardware. It's a blend of new and old, so that you get new pieces with kind of original did you basically our goal is to build something that could have been built in the twenties. You don't stray far from far from the original. <clears throat> you can see some of the detail up here. Okay. So it's got the same vernier aircraft model. Way to have a throttle to throw it out here. True. Your arm's length there.
This, this is a 1926 ditch burn, 26 foot displacement launch. Very original, been re, kind of rebuilt, recapped, kept up, maintained. Uh, never a derelict boat or anything, always a running working boat. So the old, the engine's really tired and they're just, in this era, they just weren't safe and reliable, the carburation. So we're, he's gonna keep the engine for a display item in his boathouse and we had a new a re rebuilt six, seven. just a little bit. This is what goes in most of the launches. Flat, they made the same flathead engine just around wartime to about 1955, 60. They were reliable, good carburation, perfect weight, torque, horsepower, and they're safe. The carburation is safe with flame, flame arresters. Ignition is safe for sparks. Most, a lot of these boats burn because the old engines, they just hadn't developed the carburation yet. So, and this is, this is a boat we rebuilt several years ago. It doesn't need anything else, just freshen it up, do the wiring, fit the gauges to the new engine and just make everything work. It's a typical boat if you look inside. You can see that over the years, it's had lots of stuff added and subtracted and somebody's added another voltage regulator along the way when they change the generator. So they, over time, they get to the point where they've been patched up and kind of horrible around the world. So what we'll do now is we'll, the original dash will back in with the original gauges. But we'll freshen all the wiring up with the original clock, clean it up, fix up all the years of patches and things. That quite a, quite often, when they're up north in the summer, and a lot of the repairs are done are temporary type repairs, which end up never getting corrected. <laughs> and over a period of those temporary repairs all add up, to, and you get to the point where you got to kind of go through things and freshen them up a little bit. So that's what this is in for. Just a nice working boat. And I was there in it many, several years ago. But all the seats and everything, and floor, everything's original. Steering, really never been touched, just varnished. Okay, this is a uh, 1935, and it's a home built. Uh, it's uh, spent its whole life in Finland Falls. Uh, the man is uh, 94 years old, uh, and his father built it long when he was 10 years old. In the late, uh, it was originally an import, and in the late uh, 50s, they put an outboard on the uh, uh, motor well with a bracket on the back. Steering wheel was up front, which I've got pictures. Um, so what we decided to do was um, bring it back a little more to what it was originally, because the wheel up front is too much weight up ahead, it wouldn't have uh, run right. So uh, put in the uh, moved everything to the back, put all new decks on it. I shortened the front the front deck, put the combing on uh, epoxy bottom. The sides are original, the framing's all original. Um, we went with the, um, uh, this pattern in the seats, uh, it kind of gives it that 30 look. You know, you see that in some of the old, really old boats. And I also kind of stole some of the look from Jerry Lodge's boat. You know, the, the, the contrast in color with the, uh, with the yeah. Yeah, I thought that was quite nice. And because the hull was so dark, it, like it's <clears throat> very old, it's hard to kind of hide some of the uh, imperfections. And it, with the dark, it, uh, it, uh, I think it looks quite dramatic. And uh, the motor's original from, they bought the motor new back in the, when they, when they uh, repowered. So, and it's original paint on it, so it's, it's all in good shape. Yeah.
they're, uh, it, it's a fun boat. And they're, uh, they're quite pleased. So that's, uh, that's what we try to achieve. Great. It's the, but so the, the man is coming to see the boat that we got it from. Uh, and he's been following it as I've been doing it. The people that own it now are their neighbors from the cottage. They've been up there all their lives, so he kind of gave them a boat with the understanding that they will do something with it. But I didn't want the type of caning that I didn't want to weave it myself because you got to run holes, and it wouldn't look right. It would have been okay here, but it wouldn't look good from the back. So this is caning with a spline in it. And there's still a little more storage under here for those. And the graded floors. So this is a, a 1950 Gravette. Um, basically everything from the water line down is new. When it came to me, it had been sitting on a trailer for quite some years and the trailer pushed up into the bottom of it. So all new framing in the bottom. Uh, um, just uh, the sides, they're, they're original, we just spared them a little bit, and um, re-varnish in the top. Uh, the man basically said to me, I want the boat for another five years, and I want to give it to my kids in the cottage, but he said, I don't want to get, if, if it's not in good shape, they'll never use it, and it'll, so he said, I'd rather have it fixed up. So we went through everything, all the uh, uh, mechanical, the, the uh, drive train as far as uh, shifters and, and uh, all the linkage have redone it. <clears throat> the motor, it, it ran well, but Doug Barrable is gone, is going over it. We're going to put electronic ignition on it. New gas lines, new exhaust system. Uh, so mechanically it's, it's fit and uh, it's a good user boat. It's a good sound boat. He's had it for many years and he said he, like, he likes the boat, he knows the boat. So. Uh, um, it's uh, it's coming on. I wish, you know, I've got one more coat of varnish to put on top. So I put four coats on recoating, and and uh, um, it'll be expectable. Hi, uh, welcome to Woodwork by Kevin. I'm uh, Kevin Hartley. Uh, Woodwork by Kevin, I've been running since uh, 95. I've been working uh, in the uh, Georgian Bay area and um, I usually work on bigger boats. Uh, I've had big Connies, uh, 42s and 36s and 38s and all big stuff, but now I've uh, moved into the smaller boats, um, which I really enjoy because uh, I'm getting older and crawling around them is much easier on a smaller boat. Um, so before that, uh, I used to do uh, kitchen cabinets and furniture and stuff like that, but I've always had a love for boats. We had boats when we were kids and uh, uh, the passion uh, has carried on. I've had a boat since I was uh, early 20s, so I've, I've um, always loved boating and that's what's put me where I am today with, with boats. So this year we've had a uh, a really fun project of this Duke that I bought. I bought last summer um, with the attention to, uh, to fix and uh, restore and sell, but I was lucky enough that another client of mine uh, wanted this boat, so they've purchased the boat and uh, we've been working through it together, um, together with mostly my decisions, but he's had some input as well, which is fun. So this is what we have. So this is a 1950 Duke. Uh, it's a Playmates, an 18 foot. Uh, when I got the boat, uh, it was had some finish on the side, but the decks were gray. So uh, what I did is uh, I went in and took a look inside the boat. And when I first looked, I thought maybe one or two ribs. And then as I started to take things apart, and I thought maybe seven, then maybe 14. And by the time we were done, we replaced 27 uh, steam bent ribs. So we had a good challenge uh, just before Christmas doing uh, all of these ribs. Um, once that was done, uh, we flipped the boat over 
and I had a bunch of planks on the bottom and they weren't so much rotten but they were just cracked and cupped and they just were in really poor shape so I changed a bunch of rib, a bunch of planks on the bottom and um, and then once that was done I sealed it stripped the sides because it's so much nicer to do it on when it's flipped over and sanded it roughly and then we flipped the boat back over and uh, continued to put the, the inside back together put a new transom in the back and we put some um, you know the framework back in and we're kind of at that stage where we're just starting to piece things back together and make sure everything fits before we get into the refinishing stage. Okay so when we were going through uh, the restorations I always it's important to me to try to honor the builder that built it and use the same products um, sometimes some of the products we have today are better and I think that the builders of the time would have used the products like Sikaflex and such and such that we have today. Um, with this boat it was put together uh, with copper nails, it's a new plank but you could see where the ribs were I had to put copper nails in and the copper nails were just uh, common nails which we can still get and um, it was a fun process. We had to get a tool made up because it's not something that I've done before and uh, it was a two-person job and uh, one guy on the inside and the other guy on the inside uh, on uh, the outside so it was uh, it was a really neat experience and um, it's it's exactly the way it was when we started with uh, copper nails and the same process. Perfect. So this was uh, this was one of the problems that we had in this boat. Um, obviously, this is a, an engine stringer or an engine bed. And um, you can see here it was uh, really, really damaged by rot. And it was all the way through. It, I, I noticed it was interesting with this boat. You know, typically, you know, white oak is used and, uh, and mahogany or cedar or whatever. Um, this looked like it was like a maple or a cherry or something. It's hard to tell because it's so stained. but. It, um, it was a hardwood, but it, uh, I wouldn't have said it was white oak. <laughs> so inside, you can see that we've got uh, uh, new white oak ribs that were steam bent. They also put in some new uh, oak uh, stringers. And you can see some new planks in here. This original motor that was in the boat, it's a uh, Buchanan Mi Mighty Midget. And um, we've had that up running. When I bought the boat, the motor wasn't in the uh the in the boat itself so we weren't really sure uh what we were getting into there but lucky it started up it has good compression so it's uh we're excited to see what it's going to do this is about a 25 horsepower motor and um right now we're just starting to put it in its place so we have to move it around a little bit and uh, line up the shaft and stuff like that so right now we're at the stage where we want to mock up and put things back into place um, because, you know, things have changed, you know, sometimes uh, as much as we have secured the boat together, sometimes things don't fit exactly the way they were before. So you can see that I've had to put in some new plywood for a backer. So what's important right now is, although, you know, we're a ways away from the boat being launched, you know, we've got to get this upholstery lined up and get somebody working on that so we can have everything come together come springtime. Our next move after we've got this mocked up is get this to the upholsteries, uh, finish sanding, and then we're into the refinishing stage. Okay, so here we are and uh, showing the deck. So the deck was really gray. Um, I've gone over it quickly with some uh, 40 grit and to take off the worst of it. Now we're starting, the next sanding will be 80 and we'll start to bring some of the color back into it. So kind of where we're at once we get uh, we get into this stage we're going to give her a good sand and uh, bring it to 120 and then we're going to stain it and uh, then we start our varnish process. We still got some mechanical that we're going to try to get done before we get into this because then you get, once we get into the clean zone I don't want anybody in here. Um, so we'll have, um, we'll have this boat. Our goal is to have it ready for the customer for, for May 1st. And so we've got to have it kind of early mid-April for water trial. So that's our goal anyway.